welcome back to another Imi's Garage video. This is the 2021 Mini Countryman that I've been repairing. Over the last few videos I showed you how I managed to get it to start, replaced all of the damaged parts and panelled it up ready for paint. So today I'm going to be resolving a couple of the last remaining issues, the main one being the replacement of the dashboard, the airbags and the seat belts. Also I'm going to try and resolve the issue that I had in the last episode where my new lights were not working. The dashboard has arrived so today I'm going to be ripping the old one out, putting this new one in. Uh, but before I do that I just want to make sure that it, it works properly and I'm going to give it a little clean. The dashboard definitely works, so I'm just going to now start fitting it to the car. To start with, I'm removing the infotainment system. This comes off by releasing this bezel around the screen, which reveals two screws. You remove the screws, and then you have to undo this trim on the top of the dashboard, and there's a release clip at the back of there, which allows you to then pull the unit out. I've made it look quite easy in this picture. It's actually quite a fiddly job, probably one of the slowest parts of this whole dashboard removal process. So there's a number of wires and connectors at the back. One of the wires just would not come out through regular force. So I had to use a plier to try and gently pry it out and it came out without doing any damage to it. Next up, it's this plastic trim that runs across the length of the dashboard. This houses the fiber optic lights, which look really good on a night as part of the ambient lighting package. And it also houses the heater controls. Then it's time to pull out the switches for the driver modes and the start stop button and then just beneath that there's a USB and a 12 volt or cigarette charger if you're old fashioned. Then I came across this unit that sits behind the infotainment screen. I think this is the computer for the actual infotainment system. It has a number of wires which are actually mostly colour coded so I remove those and the unit itself is just held in with two T20 screws. So this is what I'm left with. I've removed the screen. That's the infotainment computer just there, which I'm gonna pull out in a minute. I've revealed quite a few screws, which I can now start taking out. But the next job is to remove the glove box. Then I remove the glove box. Again, this is held in with a number of screws on the inside and the top and the bottom. And there's a trim under the dashboard, which reveals yet more screws. Then I just carried on removing all of the trim one by one, including the A-pillar trim, uh, a lot of trim under the driver's side dashboard. It was just a combination of removing the screws and pulling out the trims and seeing what works. And then lastly for this section, I just removed the driver's display, which just has two screws at the bottom, hidden behind some rubber grommets, and then the unit just slides out. Next up, it's time to get the steering wheel off, but before you can do that, you have to remove the steering wheel airbag. Now this is just held in with a couple of clips that are accessed through the rear of the steering wheel. I kept referring to my new part just to see where these clips were, uh, but it's relatively straightforward. You just stick in the screws from the back, making sure that the battery is actually disconnected, and then the steering wheel airbag just pops out. The dashboard still won't budge, so I'm continuing to remove all the trim that I can find to reveal additional screws and then I remove the steering wheel which is just held in with one bolt. So this is how far I've got so far. The squib's going to have to come off because I don't think it's going to make its way through there. I don't want to risk damaging that. And it seems to be stuck down here. I'm sure it'll come out without taking the centre console out but I might just need an extra bit of, uh, a bit of the old force. But we shall see. Lots of wires. I'm sure I'll remember where they go when we're done. So these squibs contain a flexible wire that turns at the same time as the steering wheel. So it's important at this stage that it doesn't rotate too much as this will cause problems further down the line. So to prevent having any issues with this system, what I do is I use some masking tape just to temporarily hold it all in place so that there's no chance of damaging any of the components. I think it's going to be easier if I just remove this whole section with the squib and the stalks and everything else. So I'm doing that now. And then I think the airbag, the airbag, the dashboard will just squeeze straight through that gap. I 
actually trying to film this and look through the camera and do it. It's not very easy. We're ready now to remove the dashboard. Steering wheel and all the stalks and everything else are now off. And the dashboard should just slide straight forward there. So I'm going to mount the camera somewhere and just take it off. So we're nearly there now with the removal. I'm just removing the last few wires with the infotainment system and I actually forgot to disconnect the airbag, the passenger side airbag. So I did that off camera and then I was able to pull the dashboard towards myself and I realised how heavy it actually was. Lifted it over the gear shifter and then I was able to slide it out. This is what we're left with. Dashboard all removed and it doesn't look too complicated to be fair. There's a chunk of wiring here. It's mostly for the stereo, I believe, for the infotainment system. And some of the bits and bobs down here. The airbag wires over there. It was a lot easier just to get the steering wheel off. I don't think this is possible with leaving the steering wheel on. Um, the slowest part was actually getting the steering wheel airbag off. That was quite tricky. Getting the infotainment screen out without damaging it. I was just quite nervous about that. And down here, there was a couple of clips. So really, I probably should have removed a center console. That would have made life a bit easier. But I can't see how you would take this console off without taking the seat rails off first, and therefore the seats. So, yeah, I managed to squeeze it out. Basically, there is a clip, if you can see it on my finger, is a clip here that clips into the dashboard that way. So I had to sort of yank it out and bend it back a little bit, but it's okay, it'll all go in nicely again, I think. And now I'm gonna try and put the new one in and hopefully it'll be a lot quicker. So this stage is just a case of following the same process, but in reverse order, brought in the new dashboard. I had to switch over the vents from the old dashboard into the new one because the new one was just a bare dashboard. But overall, it was a lot quicker to fit this dashboard than it was to remove it. There we have it, a nice new, not damaged, replacement dashboard. Now over the years, I've replaced a number of dashboards and actually I think this is one of the most rewarding jobs that you can do as a DIY. So before I get too carried away, I need to replace the seat belts and then I can finally drive the car to the paint shop. To get the seatbelt off, you just have to remove these two bits of trim from the B pillar. They just pull off. That then reveals the pretensioner, which is just held in with one bolt and the upper part of the seat belt which is held in with another bolt. So you undo those two bolts and then you have to unclip the seat belt from this clip which is where it attaches to the seat. So this was a pretty straightforward job to do. The front two seat belts took around 20 minutes each to swap over. The rear right seat belt has also been triggered in this car so I need to also replace that. This is a bit more difficult to get access to. You have to basically remove all of the rear trim from the boot. That then reveals where the pretensioner lives. And it's just a case of releasing the bolt, unplugging it and putting the new one in. And there we have it. All of the seat belts replaced onto the next job. So because last time I couldn't get the headlights to work, I've decided to take them off again. And from what I've read online, it's because of this headlight ECU or the LED module, whatever it's called. Um, so with the new set of headlights, you can either record them or you can just replace them and put your old ones back on. So even though I've got the BMW software, I think it's going to be easier at this stage just to whip the new one off and put the old one back on. Then I'll test it, hopefully that'll resolve the issue and it'll just save me a lot of hassle fiddling about in the software that I'm not really that familiar with. So the module is just held in with three T20 screws. So it's a case of removing them disconnecting the electric connector from inside and swapping the unit over and putting the three screws back in. So I've now got a spare couple of modules which I'm going to list on eBay 
for now. Let's go see if that's worked. So here's a moment of truth. Have I managed to fix the issue by replacing the module? Or is there some other issue that requires me to take the whole thing apart again? Yes, we have light. That really is a relief. I'm pleased the lights are now working. So I think that's been a really positive day today. I managed to change the airbags, seat belts, and got the headlight working. So I now need to get the car delivered to the paint shop. In the next episode, I'll be discussing the whole process in terms of success, failure, stress, etc. Cost. So I hope you'll join me next time. Till then, I'd really appreciate if you could hit the like, share and subscribe buttons in any order. I'm not that fussy. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I've been gaining you the way.